Hello to all the geographers out there. My name is Mrs Broadrib and I teach at Wildon School down in Southampton. This podcast is for the amazing students at Wildon, but also anybody out there studying the AQA specification for GCSE Geography. This is for you. Right, without further ado, today is all about flood management. How we can actually try to manage, how we can try to control these rivers so they won't flood as much and they won't destroy property and endanger life. So how can we do that? I hear you thinking, how can you actually manage a flood? Well, it's pretty difficult, but we can. First of all, there are strategies which are called hard engineering. Now this involves building a man-made structure, what you might call an artificial structure to control rivers. These do tend to be more expensive, I would say. So an example might be a dam and a reservoir, actually very expensive. We are talking millions of pounds there. But they're quite permanent and obviously they can be incredibly effective. So I'm going to outline a couple in a minute. After that, we've also got soft management strategies after that. Now these actually involve working with the land, taking our knowledge of how a river floods. So these might be things like, for example, flood warnings. These might be flood zoning and even afforestation is a good example. So I'm going to go through both of them. Sit back, have a listen, maybe jot down some notes as we go. Right, first up then are hard engineering, dams and reservoirs. So in essence, a dam, what it is, is it's a great big wall built across a river and it traps the water behind it forming this reservoir. That means that that river water can be released in a controlled way, which is hugely advantageous. In times of flood, you're going to be able to manage how much water flows downstream. Another advantage is quite often, actually, they can be used to produce electricity. That water will go through a turbine within the dam. So hydroelectric power this is, amazing, no carbon emissions, we like this. But as I mentioned earlier, they are very expensive. Furthermore, actually the dams trap the sediments. So sometimes actually a reservoir can hold less water than is the initial aim because sediment, the silt is actually trapped behind it and doesn't get through. And then we can have great big habitat loss and even settlement loss where all the flooding to make way for the reservoir behind it floods the natural land and even people's homes. So to tell you the truth, I'm 50-50 on that one. I can see the advantages, I can see the disadvantages in proper geography teacher style there, on the one hand, on the other hand. Okay, next up we've got river straightening and dredging. So straightening the river speeds up the water. So these high volumes of water in the river can pass through the area really quickly. That could be very advantageous, but dredging even more so because you can make the river deeper. Now they did this at Boss Castle. So to all my lovely students there, all the wilderness, this was one of the activities they did, the management after the 2004 Boss Castle flood. They dredged the river to make it deeper so it could hold more water. So now this helps then. So this means you'll reduce the flood risk. However, dredging does need to be done frequently. You can't just do it once. You will need to return to this and do it up. So there is going to be a bit of an ongoing cost. And also, if you speed up your river, if you make the water flow faster, you can actually increase the flood risk downstream. Just imagine it, you know, sending that water quicker, you could actually inundate an area downstream. So again, on the one hand, on the other hand, advantages and disadvantages. I'm now going to go through embankments. So what embankments mean is raising the banks of a river. So this could be perhaps with flood walls and so it could be with lots of concrete and things but it can also be actually embankments made of earth. So it can be either or but what it does is it means that the river banks are higher so the water can hold but there'll be more water sorry in the river so that it won't burst its banks as easily in times of a flood. So it allows for flood water to be contained within a river that's the key point but they can look very unnatural and again this can also because you've got so much water in the river this could also increase the river speed and increase the flood risk downstream so joining into some of the disadvantages from river straightening there okay so let's come to our last one our fourth one for hard engineering flood relief channels 
And now I'm going to actually be biased here and I quite like these. You're literally allowing flood water to flow into a relief channel. Think about it. If you go in a moment to your bathroom, when you wash your hands in the sink there, you've got your main drain, the water goes down, but you've got that little hole near the top of the sink. Sometimes they're round, sometimes they're oval. If you like left the plug in, that's your excess, that's your relief drain, you know, to try to stop it cascading over if you left the plug in. And that's exactly what a flood relief channel does. It actually allows the river water to be taken to an area where it can be absorbed or where it could actually take it so it re-enters the river further downstream. Now, this is hugely advantageous. You're removing your excess water from the river channel. So it can be really great. And Boss Castle, for our example, Wilden, they actually made what we call a flood relief drain. A culvert is the official name. So to take water away from the River Valency. But I'm afraid it is a little bit pricey, so this can be expensive. And actually, in times of really serious flooding, even the relief channel may flood. So again, you've got on the one hand, to some extent, these strategies are going to be effective with advantages, and on the other hand, not. So this leads me to our next bit. A new heading, please, in your notes, soft engineering strategies. So I said before, these do not involve building things. This is actually taking a natural approach to managing. So first up, we've got flood warnings and preparation. So there is an agency called the Environmental Agency for Britain, and it manages and it monitors the rivers and it issues the warnings through, you know, the newspaper and TV and on the internet and so on. So people can prepare. They can get sad bags outside of their front doors you know move valuables upstairs if they are in a flood risk area so this is great people have the time to protect their properties it means we can save you know expensive items and family heirlooms and things so there'll be less insurance claims and that's a big part of the problem of flooding you know think about it if your home was flooded even just with you know 15 20 centimeters of water you'd need to rip up your floors rip up your carpets the skirting board would have to come off if your electrics are quite low you might need rewiring so we are talking thousands of pounds just for that even before you think about your soggy sofa however as much as I'm saying these flood warnings and preparing is great actually some people may not listen some people may not even be able to access the warnings especially if they're elderly sometimes we get the flash floods and boss castle is a cracking example of this we had what was a month's worth of rain in two hours so actually these flash floods happen too quickly to, um, for a warning okay and again this is not actually going to stop the land from flooding it's just a way of us preparing so that comes on to my next soft management floodplain zoning what this is it sounds very posh it sounds i always think it sounds american zoning um you only allow certain land uses on the floodplain so the floodplain is the area either side of a river which is meant to naturally flood we shouldn't build there we shouldn't really have homes there what we should do is we should maybe have some grazing land and pasture for the farmer and perhaps this is where we put things like sports fields and golf courses so further away from the banks of the river we have our industry and we have our housing so that way we'd actually again have less damage if the river bursts its bank and it goes onto the floodplain either side you know we've just got to make sure the farmer's moved his perhaps his cows or his sheep to a higher up field or he's got them safely in the barn so we do that however floodplain zoning can't like you know change the fact that in britain they do estimate the environment agency estimates that there are four million people living you know at direct risk of river flooding we can't pick up and we can't move their houses so this is something that actually we have to do in the future it's not possible to change these existing land uses and then we've also got here as well we've got afforestation so you can actually plant trees and I love this not only are trees fabulous and they're like literally quite literally the lungs of our earth they will intercept the rainwater the root system will actually absorb and soak up the water in the soil so this could be an amazing simple strategy right you've got three soft engineering examples four hard engineering examples and i'm just going to finish off specifically for the wilderness with a little bit on boss castle so bear with me you've got a minute left so thank you for listening
Boss Castle. Nearly 4 million, I think actually, to be fair, it was 4.2 million, was spent supervised by the Environment Agency working with others after their terrible 2004 flood. And what did they do? Well, they did a mixture. They actually widened the river channel. So that allowed the river to actually hold more water. They built a new, bigger bridge because one of the big problems first time was how the bridge got blocked. And then that's why, you know, blocked by all the uprooted trees. And that's why the flood was so terrible. As I mentioned, they did actually um, build an overflow channel or an overflow culvert, which has been incredibly useful. They did things as well, like they actually reinforced the riverbanks. They moved any debris, so stuff if there was times of a flood that would actually be pulled down the mountain with the raging rainfall and the torrent. They did things like they didn't just widen the river channel, they lowered it as well, so they deepened it. Again, this allows the river to carry more water they did some landscape planting and some afforestation upstream so to help this interception and then they did things like they braided the upper course so they actually braided it so there were more channels for the river to take so if you're a wilderner you're going to remember you would have studied this you would have studied this when we do our case study and the causes and effects and it's important to know this for management as well I'm going to finish there and just say to my students, the supporting information to go with this will be on your Google Classroom. And then if you're interested, if you're a student out there studying AQA Geography, I shall pop the Boss Castle um, Google Slides and PowerPoint I've done. I'll pop that as a link with this podcast. Thanks so much. Take care, everybody. And I'll be back again soon. Bye for now.